In this video, I'm going to talk about Yaskawa's option for failsafe over Ethercat, the ASM7 option card, and what safety functions are available with this implementation. Hi, I am Micah Studeman. Here's a quick preview. Machine safety features are available on the Sigma 7 400V Ethercat servo pack. This servo pack provides machine safety through the use of a built-in safety port, CN8, the ASM5 safety option card, or the ASM7 Advanced Safety Module for Sigma 7 option card. The ASM7 provides failsafe over EtherCAT operation on the EtherCAT servo pack. This allows safety functions to be triggered over the EtherCAT network between devices versus safety PLCIO and hard relays and switches. Two ASM7 cards are available. One provides failsafe over EtherCAT only, and the other provides failsafe over EtherCAT and six dual channel safety inputs and outputs, along with two single channel safety IO. 14 to 16 safety functions are available depending on which ASM7 option card you are using. Now let's look at this in a little more detail. This video is here to talk about machine safety and how the ASM7 card with failsafe over EtherCAT helps with machine safety. The first question that needs to be answered is what is machine safety? Machine safety is safeguards that are applied to both machinery and the operators who work with them. There are many safeguards that can be used to make the machine safer for people around the machine or the machine itself. The basic ones are covers on the machine and fencing around parts of the machine. Some of these safeguards are sensors that can be used to change the operation of the machine when they are triggered. Yaskawa has different options available to read in the sensor information to monitor and change the motor operation. Let's take a look at the different safety options that are available for the Sigma 7 products. One safety option that is built into every Yaskawa servo pack is the hardware base block safety port CN8. This input, when triggered, puts the drive into a hardware base block state which disconnects the motor from the amplifier output. Another option that is supported on some of the Sigma 7 servo packs is the ASM5 safety option module. This card provides two independent safety input ports. Each port can be used to trigger either the hardware base block safety function or any of the three additional safety functions for monitoring motor speed and deceleration. The newest option for safety is the ASM7 option card, which provides the use of a wide variety of safety functions when compared to the ASM5 safety option card and the CN8 port on the amplifier. This safety option card is also the first to provide failsafe over EtherCAT to communicate with other EtherCAT safety devices. As you can see on this table, the ASM7 safety A option cards provide a wealth of safety functions that can be used to monitor the operation of the machine while keeping it safe for operators and other machines that may be upstream or downstream. These safety functions are explained in a separate video, elm.sigma7.07.safetyfunks, that is available on Yaskawa's website and Yaskawa's YouTube channel. Now I want to take a deeper look at the ASM7 option card from a hardware point of view. Current compatibility of the ASM7 card with the Sigma 7 product line is limited when compared to the ASM5 option card and the CN8 safety port. Looking at this chart, the ASM7 is only available on single axis EtherCAT drives that are 400 volt. The 400 volt EtherCAT drive also has to have the FT91 hardware and firmware. All of the 400 volt capacities are available in the FT91 hardware and firmware, which is required to use the ASM7 option cards. ASM7 stands for Advanced Safety Module for Sigma 7. This card comes in two variants. Both ASM7 cards provide failsafe over EtherCAT compatibility. What is failsafe over EtherCAT and how does it pertain to safety? Failsafe over EtherCAT defines how safety information is relayed over the EtherCAT network. Traditionally, the EtherCAT network handled the motion and command information of the machine, and a separate system was used to communicate safety information. For the machine to be safe, safety functions need to react within a certain defined amount of time. Using separate wiring for the safety system allowed it to not be interrupted by the main machine operation. Failsafe over EtherCAT allows safety information to be sent on the same EtherCAT communication wire as the motion and command information. This means that less wiring is required from devices on the machine. Safety sensor devices either support failsafe over EtherCAT or go into the I.O. block of the safety PLC that communicates over the failsafe over EtherCAT network. The ASM7 option cards allow the servo pack to be a slave safety device on the EtherCAT network. Here's what a typical wiring setup would look like. A safety PLC is the master of the safety network and it connects to all of the FSOE slave devices. 
In this setup, non-FSOE safety peripherals can be used through the Safety Slice I.O. A machine controller is part of the system because it controls the operation of the motor. All of these safety sensors are there to trigger the safety functions that monitor the motor operation. This is an important point to talk about. The ASM7 safety option card cannot control the motor. If a safety function is called, the motor is monitored by the safety card. The safety PLC tells the machine controller when a safety function has been triggered, but it does not command motion to the motor. The motion needs to be adjusted by the machine controller to follow the limits of the safety function. If the motor does not follow the safety function constraints, then the safety card can disconnect the motor from the amplifier output so it cannot be controlled by the amplifier or the machine controller. Looking back at the two variants of the ASM7 option card, one card comes with six dual channel safety I.O. and two single channel safety I.O. Because this card has I.O. built onto the card, non-FSOE sensors can connect directly to the amplifier instead of going through an FSOE I.O. device. This card can also function as its own mini safety PLC. The I.O. sensors would be used to trigger the safety functions internal to the card instead of getting the trigger information from the safety PLC over the EtherCAT network. Six pairs of I.O. and two single I.O. are available on this option card. Ports A through D can be used as either digital inputs or digital outputs. Port E can only be used as a digital input. Port F can be used as a digital input or set up as an analog input. And port G can be used as a general current and RTD input. As you can see that within each port, there are two channels. Two channels ensure redundancy. An alarm will occur on the servo pack if only one port activates when both should. This allows the user to verify operation of the dual channel sensor and replace it if it has malfunctioned. Port G is considered to be two single channel safety ports. One can be used as a current analog input and the other can be used as a temperature sensor analog input. Now that we have seen the ASM7 hardware, what needs to be done to configure the safety functions? The Advanced Safety Module Parameter Editor tool is used to set up and configure the ASM7 option cards. The Advanced Safety Module Parameter Editor can be downloaded from Yaskawa's website. This software provides a user-friendly interface for setting up the parameters and safety functions of the ASM7 card. To create a project in this software, you need to start a new project. You need to know what type of ASM7 module you are using. In this case, I'm going to use the FSOE only module. After a new project is created, you will need the Advanced Safety Module serial number. You also have to specify if the Advanced Safety Module will be connected to an FSOE master, and in this case it will be. Once you have the general device parameter set, you can hit check and commit. At this point, the motor and encoder parameters can be set. Once the motor and encoder parameters are set, you can go down and hit check and commit. The slots on the left side are used to set up the operation of the safety functions. Selecting the first slot, you can select the safety function that you want to set up. In this case, I'll select SLS. And then you select the activation input. In this case, we are only using the FSOE only ASM7 card. So we only have access to virtual inputs. So we're going to select a virtual input. And then you would select a output signal type if you want to set an output when the safety function is active. And then down below, this is where you handle all of the safety function parameters. And what is available here is dependent on what you select for your safety function. After the setting of each slot, a check and commit can be performed. All of these settings need to be packaged into a binary file. And using the write safe container file, we can save that information on the PC. Now the binary file saved. And later on, the start the CMIF download button can be used to download the binary file to the 400 volt EtherCAT servo pack. A project file can also be saved directly to the PC so that you can open up later to create a new binary file. 16 total safety functions are available on the ASM7 with IO option card, where only 14 safety functions are available on the ASM7 without IO option card. This is because the safe motor temperature and safely limited torque functions require an analog input that is only available on the ASM7 with the IO option card. More information on these safety functions is available in the ASM7 manual, which is available on Yaskawa's website, and in the safety functions video, which is also on Yaskawa's website and Yaskawa's YouTube channel. The ASM7 option card allows up to 10 safety slots to be used in parallel. 
As shown in this diagram, a motor can have multiple safety inputs that control its safety functions, whether it is an e-stop, light gate, pressure pad, or proximity sensor. Different safety sensors may be used to trigger the same safety function, so multiple safety slots may trigger the same function, but the trigger source is different. Each duplicated function still occupies its own safety slot and subtracts from the 10 safety slots available. Now to wrap up, I want to quickly touch on how safety is defined in the industrial sector. There are many industrial safety standards that have been put in place by safety committees that provide safety guidelines for industrial machines. Two well-known organizations that have defined safety standards are IEC, the International Electrotechnical Commission, and ISO, International Organization for Standardization. These safety standards can be broken into three types. Type A, otherwise known as BASIC, provides basic concepts, principles for design, and general aspects that can be applied towards the machine. Type B, otherwise known as generic, deals with individual safety aspects or types of safeguards that are not machine specific. And Type C, otherwise known as machine, provides detailed safety requirements for a particular machine or group of machines. When it comes to safety, people like to look at the safety performance of a machine. EN ISO 13849-1 and EN62061 define safety performance in relation to the average probability of a dangerous failure per hour. The safety integrity level, otherwise known as SIL, is part of EN62061 and has four levels of safety. Where performance level, otherwise known as PL, defines five levels of safety. A risk analysis has to be performed to see what safety level is needed for the machine. Shown here is a diagram that outlines the risk analysis steps for determining the performance level of the machine. When finding the SIL level, a similar chart is used and the risk analysis steps are shown here. At the start of this video, I showed all of the safety options that are available for the Sigma 7 servo products. Here is a list of safety integrity levels that are fulfilled by the selected safety options. The CNA connection is certified up to SIL 3. The ASM5 safety module is certified up to SIL 2 and the ASM7 is certified up to SIL 3 as long as an external encoder is used. The ASM5 option card is only rated up to SIL 2 because an external encoder option card cannot be used at the same time as the safety option card. Any safety function that deals with motion can only be SIL 3 certified if an external encoder is used or the motor encoder is certified as a safe encoder. This adds a way to redundantly check the position and velocity of the motor so you are not relying on a single system for that information. Safe motor temp and safe limited torque functions are excluded from needing an external encoder to be SIL 3 certified because they require other means for redundant operation. Safe torque off requires only the input to be SIL 3 certified, so it doesn't require the external encoder either. The full closed loop option card or certified converter along with the ASCAO encoder can be used to give the ASM7 redundant position and velocity information. Here's a summary that shows how well the ASM7 failsafe over EtherCAT and ASM7 failsafe over EtherCAT with I.O. cards fulfill the industrial safety standards. As you can see, the ASM7 cards provide similar safety, but in certain categories, the ASM7 option card with FSOE and I.O. comes in slightly lower than the ASM7 option card with FSOE only. More in-depth information can be found by looking online at the ASM7 product manual that can be downloaded from Yaskawa's website. Thanks for watching this video. For more information on the ASM7 option card, visit yaskawa.com.